afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our weekly Wednesday Adobe Education Creativity Workshop Series. Um, I'm so excited to start these off again after taking a hiatus at the beginning of the year. Um, but today, I'm really excited to be joined by Enrique Perez, who is a Adobe Education Leader joining us from California. Um, and today, Enrique is going to be sharing how to create a fictional book cover. Um, so Enrique, would love for you to introduce yourself, and I'll hand it off to you. Hey, uh, sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, good to see everybody here. Uh, welcome back uh, to the workshops once again. My name is Enrique Perez. Um, I've been teaching graphic design for the past 19 years at Coachella Valley High School. That's over here in Palm Springs, California, where you guys are the queue, conventions and all that good stuff. Very close from it. Um, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe InDesign. Those are our four chains from my classroom. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about Adobe Photoshop. Uh, especially for those challenging students who, you know, might want to be taught outside the book. I had, I went along and I uh, decided to create a couple of lessons, uh, tutorials and that kind of thing outside the book. Uh, those are really engaging. You know, a lot of the students would like that. So um, I'll give you a little sample here of what that may look like, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen for you guys. I will be using Adobe Photoshop once again. And... Hopefully you get to see that, but that's uh, that's the that's the cover. Um, it does say William the Freak, supposed to be a troubled teenager uh, with some kind of alien-looking eyes, and his hair is kind of messed up. Um, very fictional, uh, not a not a true story, not a not a true book either. But uh, it's something that it really gets the students engaged. Okay, all right. So let me go ahead and close this one up, and we'll start right from the beginning. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do file open. I'm gonna go ahead and look for my samples. So we have the picture of the kid. This is the kid right here. Come in. And then we're also gonna have a picture of the hair. This is the hair right there. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make sure um, <clears throat> that we separate the images so that we're there side by side. Uh, take a look inside my layers palette. Um, I don't know if you guys have a lot of experience with Photoshop or not, but sometimes what we like to do is we like to get um, the layers palette out of there so that we can go ahead and manipulate it whatever we want. We like to position the palette someplace else. A lot of students have questions too, like what happens, Mr. Press, if the layers palette is no longer there? You can always direct them to go out to window and go down to layers, and then you can get it back, okay? So that's, that's one of the main things that um, a lot of my students, you know, uh, they seem to run into problems with. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use the move tool. We'll use the move tool to move this hair from one place to another, okay? So this is how we do it. Just grab it, and then we drop it. And Photoshop's so smart, it creates a brand new layer here, layer number one. Which, you know, you can name it hair if you want to, hair, and then press return, that kind of thing. That's fine. Now, one thing that you notice here, though, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see that, but the image in the bottom has like a lavender color to it and the hair has a black and white color to it so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to take away the hue of the background layer which is this one okay this is how you do it uh image adjustments and desaturate now i could always go black and white and you can modify the black and white colors however you want you see that you can actually do the levers for reds yellows and that kind of thing but as I stated before, um, with the students, what you want to do is you just want to make sure you ease this little thing into it, okay? Like image adjustments, the saturate will do the same thing, and it's hardly noticeable. So that's what I like to do. Uh, let's go back to the hair layer, which is this one on top. And here's another thing I want to do. Did you notice here um, how the ears of this man's hair, uh, it should be able to match up to that side right there, and then this one on this one, this side? Okay, this is what you need to do now. We're going to go ahead and free transform this layer. We're going to go out to edit. Then we're going to go down to free transform. Hold down the shift key. And now we're able to go ahead and reduce the hair. I'm trying to match all those ears. That's what I'm going to, that's my focus on this thing. Try to match we, those ears. We have a few okay. questions in the chat um, and a lot of yes. great feedback. So uh, Steven says, give that kid some wrinkles. <laughs> and then uh, right. Jurgen, who's um, joining us, says, um, do you work with the latest release of Photoshop? 
Okay, yes, uh, the latest release in Photoshop, I work with that in the classroom, but I do have some older machines that require an older type of Photoshop. So this one that I'm working with, by the way, um, is Adobe Photoshop CS6 Extended. So this one was back from um, 2012. So yes, the one that I work with at, in the classroom is uh, 2018. That's the one that I work with. And I do have three machines that work with this type, which is the uh, CS6. Yeah. But pretty much um, what I like to mention is that in Adobe Photoshop, the basics are all there. The background is there. The layers are there. Um, the layer mask that, that I'm about to do right now is also there. Uh, there might be a few techniques that, that might be newer to the newer releases. But what I like to tell people is to go ahead and go to YouTube. And they can also check out a couple or, or five minutes to seven minute tutorials about the newest uh, releases for Photoshop. <clears throat> so yes, that, definitely that that is a good question. Yes, this is Adobe uh, Photoshop. What was it? Uh, CS6, right? Double check. Yes, CS6. Well, this is what I'm working with right now. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Now I'm trying to go ahead and match up the ears here. Those wrinkles are there. That's pretty funny. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and erase them. But we're going to use a layer mask to erase this, okay? So we're going to go out to layer. Now we're going to go down to layer mask. And we're going to hit reveal all. The only thing that's going to happen here is a little small white box is going to show up next to the hair layer, okay? So keep an eye on the layers as I do this. It's right there. That's the white little box. So that little white box is going to help us do a lot of different things. In a sense, it's going to act like, a, like if you're using the eraser but you're not going to modify the whole thing. So by doing this, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and press letter G. This is for the gradient. And it looks something like this right there. And all, I do, all I'm going to do now is hold down the shift key. And then we're going to go ahead and experiment with drawing a line inside of this forehead of this kid. Because, yeah, that, that looks, <laughs> looks kind of different. You know, how, how does a kid have such, <laughs> such a wrinkled face or whatever have you? But with a gradient tool and with the layer mask, we're able to go ahead and erase that. Um, we could use a brush. So we can go ahead and uh, erase more of it if we needed to. And I like to do that every now and then. I like to touch it up on the sides of the hair, by the ears. Just trying to make sure that the black color kind of goes away from it and looks a little more realistic. Um, here's another thing. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Okay, there you go. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the magic wand, okay? The magic wand here is going to be <clears throat> you use for this purpose. And this is how you're going to do it. There's a quick selection tool on my Photoshop business here. And there's also the magic wand. The shortcut is letter W. The reason why I mentioned that too is because after you're done with this, you could probably do a quiz with your students. And you can quiz them with the shortcuts, okay? So magic wand tool is this one, the letter W. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on the layer that has the hair. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the darker areas, the darker shades of this hair. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see that. Okay, there it is. Um, now, after using the magic wand, we're going to go ahead and go up to select. And we're going to refine the edge because we're going to mess around with a little bit with this. We're going to go ahead and make sure that it looks a little bit smoother, um, that the radius is taking over just a little bit more. Selection of the hair is really tricky in Photoshop. It always has been. But I think the newest releases, they have even a, a better set of tools to create this or to make this happen, okay? So that's why uh, it's always really important to get the newest releases from Adobe. Go ahead and click OK on this one. And you'll see what I mean. We've got a little bit more of the hair situation going. And what we're going to do next is we're going to use the brush. So we can go ahead and uh, brush away all of these dark areas. Because like I stated before, we're using the brush to act like if it's working as an eraser, okay? So that's why you want to tell your kids that in the classroom. You go ahead and have fun with this. Go ahead and click it, go all the way around, all the areas <clears throat> that you get going there. Left and right. I noticed that the opacity is 64% of my brush right now. And the reason why is because I want to go ahead and take it easy with this one, okay? I want to go ahead and match on the back of the yeah, I don't want it so much so it's this, and 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 this
Oh, now it's perfect. Now it's better. Oh, okay. Yep. You know what it is? I'm probably too far away from the microphone here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, so the brush away here, um, I'm using 64%. So we can go ahead and brush away the areas. Yep. There you go. Now, after that, we can go ahead and go select, deselect. And then we're going to go ahead and get, go on uh, Command Minus here. So we can go ahead and step back a little bit. So you can see what the transformation is happening. All right. Doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty good. The hair one, we can go ahead and close that one if you want. That's fine. Like this. So that way you have this one to work with. Okay. There you go. All right. That's not too bad. Now, um, the next step, we're going to go ahead and combine the hair layer with the background layer. So there's a couple options on this one. What you can do is you can go up to layer. Now you can go ahead and go to flatten the image. And now you'll see what I mean. The whole background is stuck into one, which is a pretty good thing. Because the next step that we're going to do is we're going to make uh, his size look a little bit more devilish or his size look a little bit more meaner, I guess. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and use the filter, the filter option. We're going to go up to uh, filter. Now we're going to go down to render and then we're going to go ahead and hit lens flare. Okay, so we're going to be adding a lens flare. Uh, I'm going to try positioning it right on his side there. 100% is okay. 50 by 300 is fine. And let's go ahead and click OK and see what that looks like. Hmm, that looks like it's a little bit off center. Let me go ahead and do that one really quick. So I'll go to edit and do lens flare. And then I'm going to go back to filter again, render, and lens flare again. Move it slightly to the right there. It's always kind of tricky. Click OK. Oh, that's not too bad. It almost looks the same as the one before, doesn't it? <laughs> that's OK. Because this like is what's going to happen next. Yes. <laughs> this is what's going to happen next here, though. If you go filter, lens flare again, and if you go filter, lens flare again, it's hardly noticeable that you you know that it wasn't really right in the middle so that's something also to keep in mind with the students now, a lot of students just tend to give up right away like, oh mr perez i don't do it right i don't like this whatever no just keep doing it keep at it keep at it and yeah you'll get it right it's all about practice that's why i tell them uh same thing again filter render lens flare but now we're going to affect the right eye so we're going to move it slightly to the right to get it right in there and click okay there you go same thing, filter, lens flare, shortcut, filter, lens flare, shortcut. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit different. It's starting to look like somebody you don't want to run into, you know, in the store or anywhere else. So that's not too bad. <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, you know what? L let me go ahead and uh, I'll tell you something. One of my one of my students created this one. One of my students created this one. Now, that looks really good. That looks really good. And and the reason why I really love this one was because when he made it, um, I told him to go, just go ahead and he asked me. He goes, Mr. Press, can I do my own rendition? I said, yes, go ahead. You know, go ahead and try it out. See what you can do. So this is what he did. He made this image into a black and white image, a negative image. So you can see from the bottom, you see the shirt. It was white before, and now it's black. And he has this little nice... Uh, background going through it and everything else i mean he did, he did a really awesome job on this one so i'm gonna try to re recreate this to see how that goes okay um let me go ahead and close it don't say that one but this one this is the one we're working with so going back to this one uh very simple a shortcut i believe it was command i and if you do a command i it creates that negative look to it even his hair looks a little bit distressed so to say um what we can do though, if you if you don't want to mess with the hair that much, what we can do is we can make a, a copy of this background layer, convert it into a layer zero, making a copy. We can do then do command I, which I believe is a uh, image adjustments invert. There you go, image ad adjustments invert. Same thing as command I. And now if we get to use the layer mask, the one that we used before. For the hair we can go down to layer layer mask reveal all we can then use the same one that we used before also which is uh the gradient field but now with the gradient field this is what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and go something like this 
you can just see his eyes. Or if you want to do the opposite, you can deselect reverse and you can go like this. Totally up to us. Totally up to you. It's totally up to the student. And that's something I really like about Photoshop, you know, the creativity. The creativity just kicks in and, and it's totally up to you how to do this, okay? All right. So now um, the title. Let's go with the title of the book, okay? We're going to go ahead and press letter X here. What that's going to do is going to give me white in the foreground and black in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and press letter T. Letter T is going to be for typing tool, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and uh, click in the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and type set William. You can barely see it. That's fine. The image resolution is pretty high. So I'm going to go ahead and do Command T. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch this up like this. Now you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to change the type style to Times New Roman. You can do this. Highlight the text. Times, Times New Roman. There you go. A little bit better. Uh, Command T, make it smaller. Oh, here's another thing I forgot though. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use small caps. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the title. Now we're gonna go on top over here. And we're going to go to character set. And we're gonna select that one, small caps. When you guys select small caps, it just kind of gives you this refined look to it. The type style looks a little bit nicer. And that's what I'm going for, okay? So, William, let's go ahead and double click. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, duplicate. We're going to duplicate this layer and then we're going to drop it down because we need to do the rest of the things here. Like William, the, the side, and then we can go ahead and make a copy of that again. But now we're going to go ahead and, and go with the title. So this is William the Freak. Oh, there he is. William the Freak. Okay, a couple other things you guys can add to this one is um, drop shadows. You can go up to layer, layer style, and hit on drop shadow right there. Over to the side, and you can see a little bit of the shadow that it, you see it in the background there. It looks a little bit ghostly. It looks pretty cool. You can center it in the middle if you want, distance zero. You can spread it and make it the size a little bit bigger, and then click OK. That gives it a little bump. Now, let's say, here's another question for my students. Uh, what if we wanted to have the same copy layer effects on this one that we do on, on the word the and on the word William? Here's what you can do. We can go ahead and go up to layer, layer style, copy layer style. Then after that, go down to the other words and then go layer, layer style. But now we're going to hit paste, paste layer style. Okay, same thing with William. Layer, layer style, paste layer style. Okay, there you go. It's time to look a little bit better. Um, yeah, I mean, trying to see what else we can do. No, that looks good. That looks really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the picture of the book now. I'm going to go file open. I'm going to go back to desktop. And here's my book sample. There it is. We'll separate them. Um, you now this is up to you you can either go up to layer and flatten the whole thing or this is what i like to do as a graphic designer in me oh i always like to make copies of things so this is what i like to do i like to make a duplicate of this thing so i'm gonna go image go down to duplicate but now i'm going to select merge layers only so that way when i use my move tool i can go ahead and grab it and move it to the side and the whole thing moves together but essentially, I'll see how the original over here open, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, minimize this one. And now we're going to go ahead and position William the Freak, the book cover, right about right here in the corner. I'm looking at, uh, let me go ahead and zoom in. I'm looking at this, this corner right here. That's what I'm going for, this corner right here, okay? This one. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, manipulate this one. Um, I believe it was edit transform and i want to say it was distort let me try distort yeah it was distort there it is so i can go ahead and distort it i can grab the points manipulate them bring that down we have some questions in the chat here um yes so first um from kevin can you create a layer group and apply a layer style to the group 
Ah, uh, you can. Yes, yes, you can do that. You you can apply it to the group. That way, you can keep it all together. Um, I I guess the what I was saying about making a copy and being a graphic designer and all that good stuff. Okay, here's the thing. In my classroom, I have 145 different students, and I only have a set of 20 computers. Mm-hmm. So what I like to do is I like to have the students make duplicates of their stuff and always, always, always save their things in their folder. So that's why, that's why. Um, yes, if I if I was to go ahead and show them, you know, you guys can go ahead and group your stuff into folders and all that good stuff. Uh, I might have a lot of different. Uh, opinions about that matter it, it kind of becomes like like this is the end goal to make a book mm-hmm. but there's so many avenues to go at it there's so many steps that you can do mm-hmm. so i try to i try to really not to complicate things for the students that's why that's why i i didn't use a, a lot of different folders for a lot of different filters or or layer styles but yes definitely you can go ahead and do that you can create folders for a lot of different layer styles yes that, it, that will be a yes. <laughs> and then the other question um, I had in here was around smart object. Um, so if you, as you were moving to the the image to the book, um, what are your thoughts on, on making a smart object? Uh, my thoughts on making a smart object is great. I, I know what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> what happens with a smart object is you definitely have a file when what you do with it is if you want to replace an image from inside the file all you have to do is double click that layer and then a different file opens up and when you manipulate that different file and you close it and you save it all the changes get saved on the original file but without distorting the one inside the smart object um here's another thing about smart objects uh since smart objects are a little bit more advanced what I like to do is I like to go ahead and introduce smart objects with my um, second year students. Mm-hmm. So that way they 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 have a hold of, of oh, I know what you're talking about, Perez, with your layers. I know what you're talking about, your layer mask. And then we get into that. We get into, um, with my second uh, year students, we get into, uh, into smart objects. And they can create their own files as smart objects. It becomes really awesome. The, club beca- the class becomes really, really interactive and and really awesome because then you have students asking other students, hey, how did you do that? And it's like, okay, well, don't you want to know how I did it? So yeah, this is how I did it. And then we get, we start a big old discussion about it and, and it's really interactive. And uh, that's one thing I really miss about the classroom right now is the inter- interactivity yeah, about all the students, all the stuff yeah. that I can come up with. And yes, definitely. Yes. But yeah, smart objects. Yeah. You know what? If you guys want to, I can create another video presentation on smart objects. I mean, I have a problem <laughs> with that. But on this one, because like I said before, we're dealing with uh, maybe uh, level entry students. I don't want to complicate matters that much, especially if anybody out there too is just kind of getting a feel for Photoshop. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't give up on it. I'm not. I don't give up on Photoshop. It's really good, but it's it can also be really intense. So, yeah. Um, yeah. A- any other questions out there? Or? No, I think uh, that is it for now. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Yeah, looks great. So, um, this within the freak then you have a cover in front of it just like this. Um, another thing you can do, going back to the original file here, we can actually grab uh, the text William the Freak, and we can and we can grab him. I'm using the Shift key, by the way. You click on the first, and then you click Shift, and you click Shift again. You can grab all of them, and then drop them over here on this side. So this is another thing I like to do. What I like to do here is um, I like to experiment with the sleeve on the side right here, the spine. I like to go Command-T and then rotate the text outside the box, position it in the middle someplace, and then press Return. Obviously, um, this part is falling off right here. I get that. But that's why the letters are, uh, I mean, the words, the words are separated. So you can grab them each one, one by one. You're moving down. You can get William the Freak over here. You can put it down. And also, I believe um, there's an option here for centering objects. It's the one on top over here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's on top of the menu here. That says Align Horizontal Centers. All you have to do is click it, and then it aligns everything. Um, it kind of goes with 
right in the middle of this text right here. Um, I'm gonna do Command T though, because it seems like the word that is very very big. So I'm making I'll make it smaller, just so it can fit the contour of that side. And then the freak word is gonna come up here. There you go. That's a little bit better. Now here's the thing. Um, you notice how <clears throat> you have an angle here on this uh, title of the book. And if I use the hand tool, which is the letter H, I can go ahead and move it up. And you see how that's in the line very well. It's a trick that you guys can do with this one. Uh, you saw me using this sword over here. So here's, here's what I like to do. What I like to do is I like to convert this text into um, a rasterization, a rasterized type. I like to do that to all of them. And I'm going to do that one too. And then also the word William. I like to do that to all of them because then once you do that, then you're able to go ahead and manipulate this thing. You can go out to edit, transform, and then you can do perspective or skew. Skew works pretty good. So you can align it. You see that? And then you can press return. I can do the same thing with the word the. Edit, transform, skew. I can skew it so it can match the style of everything else that's going on on the side here. Press return, and I can go to the word freak. Go edit, transform, and also skew it, just like this. So that gives you a little bit more of a perspective. It gives you, it gives also the student a, a little bit of realization that this book cover is actually looking like a real book cover. And um, at this point, you can actually save it. You can have them save it. You can have the students save it as a JPEG, upload it to their uh, websites or even to the document folders and all that good stuff. So. Um, yeah, I think pretty much this is the end of the instruction for this one. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and let us know. Um, uh, oh, here's another thing I wanted to show you guys. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you a quiz. I do I do have a quiz for this. Um, let me go ahead and uh, share this one here. I'm going to go ahead and share this one with you guys real quick. Uh, this one here. This is the this This will be a sample for the quiz. William book cover. While creating William the book lesson, you have gotten to know the magic wand and all that good stuff. There's a couple of questions that you guys can ask your students after this. Also, independent practice. Don't forget about that. Give the students plenty of independent practice so that way they can modify things and they can even might surprise you. You just never know, like this other kid did to me. Um, it says here you may want to change the type style, apply layer styles to it. Select your type style, drop shadows, that kind of thing. Change the settings to something you like to show the instructor. Okay. So, having said that, we'll go ahead and go back to uh, Blue Jeans here. And uh, there you go. Okay. So. And we have we have another question um, here from Georgina. Um, do you create formative assessments for each of your projects, or just by Adobe Tools? Do do you do assessments during live sessions during distance learning? Okay, uh, during the distance learning, what I try to do um, because of the connectivity or the different home places that my students have, they might not have Wi-Fi, they might not have the computer that has Photoshop, that kind of thing. What I like to do is I like to communicate with them through doing quizzes using Google Classroom. And also I have a YouTube channel. So when I do videos like this ones, I upload them to a YouTube channel. I give them the link for the week. And then I give them a formal assessment through it. But uh, I also try not to kill them too much with too many questions. Because I, I always believe that even though they're taking my class for computer graphics, not a lot of students are going to become you know, graphic designers themselves. They might become doctors, they might become lawyers, they might become business people. So I try to give them just a little bit at a time. And uh, the, the foremost assessment will be something like that, like the one I just showed you right now, which is a small little quiz, like five to, maybe five to seven questions. Um, we'll see how things go, you know, as far as the semester ends, because that's a, also a big question for a lot of different school districts right now. Uh, with all these things about being separated and all that good stuff. But uh, right now I'm just using Google Classroom and I'm using a lot of the, the video projections like YouTube and video links like that. Yeah.
Nice. And we have a lot of um, some positive comments here. So thank you from Georgina and Heather says definitely where the class where fun is the goal. Um, and then we have some ideas for extension. Um, Kevin um, has mentioned um, maybe, let me be pulling up here, um, dimension, if you've used dimension CC before, um, how to drop individual images on a 3D object. Those for, oh. for more advanced. And then um, okay. Jurgen said, maybe we can make the boy speak and move his lips in After Effects. So there's some ideas oh, of how, wow. to, how to continue um, beyond uh, this project. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That sounds good. I haven't looked into Dimensions uh, CC at all. I heard of it. Um, but having, in matter of fact, right now, because I have a lot of time on my hands right now, I'm looking into getting uh, 3D printers for the classroom or for myself here in my own garage because now i'm noticing the there's a brand new technology out there but they use different chemicals and you have to be really careful with those chemicals with the 3d printers and stuff like that so um i mean definitely this that the 3d stuff is really good and now photoshop it's able to go ahead and manipulate that kind of stuff and it's able to manipulate video also at the same time mm -hmm. so i mean photoshop is getting really strong Really strong software, yeah, that's for sure. And there, there are a couple of tips. Kevin also shared um, for, I've seen this too, we've been doing this, closed captioning with YouTube videos is to record your voice in Chrome and then um, Google Docs and then upload that text to YouTube for um, just being able to be more accessible for more students, um, which we've seen as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we'll we'll stop the recording there, and then we'll open it up to Q and A for people who are on um, joining in live and or discussion and some ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Georgina has asked, and for those who are watching the recording, if you'd like to share your Twitter handle um, and any other websites or links that um, would be helpful. I have, I have it up here so I can share my screen while you're putting it in. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So oh, for yeah. Twitter. I remember that guy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we'll follow you. And then um, I have here on edX as well. I also wanted to ask, um, are you using the, the templates? In our uh, that's in uh, kind of like the newest CCs, we have templates and you can put directly images for portfolio. So that's, I mean, can be great for the student to download the PS templates uh, that free for you. And they have books and they have bags and all kind of stuff mm -hmm. put directly on it. That could be good for them to look at. Yes. Oh, yes, that definitely, especially with a uh... With the students, like I said before, the a lot, of, uh, some of them are not buying into the the class itself or into the programs or whatever have you. Uh, yes, definitely, those, those are those are really good uh, elements to use in the classroom. Um, I've been teaching this for 19 years now, so I've seen a lot of different things in the classroom that work. I've seen a lot of different things that don't work, but one thing that really works is having a lot of teacher interaction just like you guys are doing right now that's like we're doing right now uh anytime i, I get I, I get a chance to get out of the classroom it's always a good thing because i would get some other ideas Every, you know so um so definitely i mean I, i'm really yeah. i really enjoy that yeah using different uh styles into the classroom using different uh goals and one of my biggest goals right now for the kids is to go ahead and create a enough stuff so they can go ahead and create a digital portfolio that mm -hmm. that is a big thing yeah yeah i actually i i just signed in to in july do something for this creativity that mm. maybe will help for a unique portfolio so i didn't have other days before that but um hopefully like tips and tricks how to manipulate some of your photos in an easy way to look Maybe a little bit nicer and different. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah. See, my yeah, students, no, they they are 
they just want to do what's good for their work work that's it so they ask questions about what does it do for me in my job so i said okay because mm -hmm. they're older and they're working already so i have to give them projects that work for their job you know like, yes <laughs> Oh, yes, Otherwise, yes. you don't want to say, don't give me tricks that I cannot inter, I mean, do it in my job. Yes. You know, uh, one thing that I was using at the beginning of the school year this past year is been um, Adobe Spark. We'll be using a lot of Adobe Spark video, a lot of Adobe Spark postings, a lot of Adobe Spark uh, for web page creation so they can create mm -hmm. their own portfolios for free. That's been a yeah. really good plus. Really good class from Adobe. Well, so, if you yeah. ever want, uh, some of us, I mean, I'll, I'll come give them uh, like something sometime. You can invite me. I'll jump on Zoom or something and you yeah. choose something and have, I'll be a guest for you. I have mm -hmm. no problem. It'll be fun. I just did it for another group in Miami and it was fun. Just see, each, each teacher does bring something different. So, yeah. like, I have teachers come to my class, and then they do something different completely, and I'm like, wow, I didn't think about it. And, of course, mm -hmm. you learn from your students all the time, because I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that, that's definitely a thing that we all do. We all kind of learn from our students, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's I, I mean, like I said before, that's something that I miss for them right now. I miss the interactivity for them and all, this, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, about them giving me some tips on how to do things or yeah. myself tell them how to do things. I kind of miss that right now, you know, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We'll keep checking uh, Adobe website here for educational resources. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. going back and forth and you find some cool stuff. Yeah. Really definitely. helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think, <laughs> and in the Facebook group too, if there's other things, I know, Hannah, you've been sharing a lot too. Just any resources that we can share out, just let us know. Um, but what I'll do is I'm, I'll stop the recording here and then I'm, I'm just gonna unmute everyone. Um, so for those who are watching the recording, uh, be sure to join us next Wednesday at 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific. We'll be uh, moving forward with our weekly creativity workshops. Um, and thank you again, Enrique, so much for joining us. I know there's a lot going on with moving to oh. distance learning and appreciate you yeah. taking the time to share this with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't leave. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>